Ladies, has anything like this ever happened to you? Watch. It's open. It's open. I don't go out on dates with guys who don't open the door for me. Really? Really. Seriously? Yes. Oh, man. No, he didn't. Well, according to a recent survey by Match.com, 73% of women believe that chivalry is dead. And according to one of our next guests, she explains in her new op-ed, it's because women killed it. Suzanne Venker is a, column a columnist and an author of The Alpha Female's Guide to Men in Marriage. And joining her to discuss is Wendy Acefo, a professor at Johns Hopkins University and a Democratic strategist. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Oh, this is going to be good. Good morning. <laughs> okay, so Suzanne, uh, Suzanne, you wrote this op-ed. Wendy, yeah. I know you've read it. I've read it. And you compare a telegraph to that was sent, a telegram that was sent to a woman right before she got married to a Facebook video. The first one I want to read is back in the day, back in 1954. Your friend, her mother just recently died. Your friend was going through a memorabilia. She finds this telegram, and it says, "This is the husband writing it to his soon-to-be wife. Darling, I shall be waiting for you at eight with a lifetime of." expectancy my heart will be coming with you down the aisle may God be with us tonight as we pray we will always be with him thank you for becoming my wife my love forever yours Henry then several days later Suzanne you saw on Facebook this video where this person was saying chivalry is harmful to both men and women because it reinforces this idea that women need to be helped or saved by a stronger man and it takes away a woman's agency so you saw these two contrasts and you decided to write the op-ed explain that a little for us Sure. So it just struck me as just, wow, I mean, the stark contrast between this beautiful letter that really moved me to seeing this um, message from this woman basically selling the same tired message that men have been hearing for decades, which is, I can do it by myself. I'm strong enough. You don't need to hold the door open for me. You don't need to pay my way. You don't need to basically anything that's sort of traditionally male and female in terms of the courtship is just gone. And after so many years of hearing that, my argument is that men have effectively said, okay, well, you said you don't want it, so I guess I'm not supposed to do it. And if I do it, then you're going to be insulted. So they're really lost and confused about what it is that women want. And I think women are just as confused because they've been sold this message that that, that chivalry is bad or somehow destructive to women mm -hmm. when, of course, it's, it's not at all. And so we have, a, we have a problem. Wendy, what do you think? Are we to blame women? I wouldn't go as far as to say that women kill chivalry. Whether you look at from Cardi B to Beyonce or working moms like myself or even countless others, what we have done is we have evolved the conversation of what it means to be a woman in today's society. And what that means is, you know, we're doing it all. And it basically means that men have to basically rise to the occasion to meet us where we are. We are not, you know, the mothers of our past, and there was nothing wrong with that. But we are getting our arms involved in a lot of things, and we're busy doing and juggling millions of things. So chivalry is not dead in the essence of we don't want men to open doors for us. But what we are saying is, you know, you have to handle us and we have to handle our full-time job as well. Yeah, you, um, <laughs> you make a good point in, in this op-ed, Suzanne. You talk about how it's not that we can't open our own doors. It's not that we can't pay for our own, own food. But um, you say that it, is, is it, it, does it show a sign of respect or like why why is it important to let a woman do those things right so what's been lost in this whole you know 40 year um, experiment really or progress however you want to define it is the the yin and yang or the dance between women and men and men and women now are completely confused and lost about who's supposed to do what who wants what and what women specifically are confused about is is men and how they're, that, is, that is in their DNA to provide and protect women. That is who they are. That is their identity. And we've essentially ripped it out of them. And when they they become unmoored, I mean, if you don't let them do what's in them to do, you're going to disrupt that, that dance. And so what I'm trying to say is, look, masculinity and femininity are wonderful things in and of themselves. And when they work in tandem, sparks fly. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. awesome, but we're not allowing that to happen because we are infused with this message about equality, which this idea that men and women are the same when they are not. And so that, that gesture of holding the door open, I was just using as one example, is not men trying to oppress women. It's 
it's they want to please them, they want to take care of them, they want to show them honor, really. And we, we knew this in the past. Everybody knew this. And this has gotten completely lost in the last 40 years. You can see that in that telegram, how, how deeply mm -hmm. that was felt and understood. And, mi and women today want that. You read that telegram, who would not want that, right? Yeah, but how are point. we going to get there if we, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, Wendy, we've got to get back to understanding. Wendy, do you think if we're, we're all, I've heard it, it said that we are created the same, I mean, we are both equally as important, but created differently mm -hmm. in our needs and our wants. Right. Do you agree with that? I, I agree with that to some extent. And as a wife and as a mother of two little boys, I believe that the strength of a woman is also what makes men respect us even more. We are not necessarily damsels in distress here. We can open doors for ourselves. We can do things for ourselves. And we welcome men to also open doors for us as well. But it's okay for a woman to be strong. It's okay for a woman to be independent. That in no way negates a man's masculinity at all. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies. Thank I, you. I couldn't agree more. I, uh, <laughs> okay. Wendy, Suzanne, great That's to see okay. you. We'll just have to have you back. We'll continue the conversation okay. later. Okay. Thanks, ladies. It's a common talking point among feminists claiming to support women, unless, of course, you voted for President Trump. Listen. When I see women doing that, I think, why are they publicly disrespecting themselves? Why are they opening the door to have someone say that about them uh, in their workplace? There's just no evidence that he has an understanding of what uh, women's lives are like today. Our next guest argues feminism has very little to do with women, instead arguing, quote, it's an elitist exclusive club where the rights of women are championed only if you are a certain brand of woman and only if it suits a liberal political agenda. Joining us now is freelance writer and former press assistant for Senator Rick San Santorum, Lauren DeBellis Appel. Thank you, Lauren, for being with us. Good morning, Ainsley. Good morning. So I read your op-ed, but for the folks at home that didn't read it, what is your message? Well, you know, it's, I think, millions of people just like me that voted for President Trump, and there's 42% of us that voted for him and chose not to vote for Hillary Clinton. We are tired of hearing from people like her and Michelle Obama and liberal Hollywood elitists that we should vote for somebody just because they're a woman. We're tired of being lectured to about what we should think and what we should believe and uh, who we should vote for. We are intelligent people and we can think for ourselves. And the definition of feminism is to think independently. And apparently that's not what we're allowed to do anymore. A lot of Republicans say the feminists are teaching tolerance of everyone, women's rights, unless, unless you think differently than they do. You agree with that? Correctly, it's it, correct. It, it's you're you're allowed to to you're not allowed to think differently than they do, mm -hmm. and if you do, you're shamed and you're ostracized by them and by their the Hollywood elitist that think like them. Well, and we don't want to be lectured to anymore. People were really um, they were so upset with Hillary, as you remember, when she said the deplorables, calling all the people who support Donald Trump deplorable. She lost a lot of votes because of that. She is in that sound bite that we played at the beginning at the top of this interview. She said, if you voted for President Trump, you're disrespecting yourself. Do you take offense to that? You're disrespecting yourself if you're a Trump supporter. I absolutely take take offense to that. You know, again, like I said, we're we're a large group of people. There are 42 percent of us that voted for for President Trump, and you know, we're moms like I am. We're working career women. Um, we're intelligent people. We can think for ourselves. We didn't, like she said, necessarily take our cues from our husbands and our boyfriends. We decided for ourselves who we could vote for, and we didn't need to be told. And we didn't just get in line just because they told us to. And and vote for a woman just because it was a woman that's running. I mean, quite honestly, you know, that's what she ran on. You know, we were told that we were supposed to vote for her because she was a woman. And, you know, voting for someone just because all they bring to the table is is their gender is honestly the, the, the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. So what is your message to feminists this morning? It's, you know, I think we need to be more inclusive. I think that we need to support each other uh, no matter what our views are. And I, I think that we need to stop lecturing each other. Um, uh, we can think for ourselves. And the definition of feminism is thinking independently. Oh, this you crazy mother. Yeah.